Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so take 4,572, my name is Stalker, I'm a member of Command for Pro Nations, and I'm going to run you fine gentlemen and ladies through how our community servers work. So, Mike Force mission file, provided to us by Sog Purifiers uh, Savage Games, and ended with permission under their license. So, without further ado, adieu, duty officer. Press my left Alt and H key. That's going to bring up this menu here. Left of my name, I can click a button and I can choose many of the public teams. Mike Force, General Infantry, ACAV, Drive the Shit, Build the Shit, Green Hornets, Fly the Shit, Spike Team, the guys who get the job done. All right, I'm part of a whitelisted Spike Team unit called SASR. So that's the unit I'm going to select. Now for all intents and purposes, every whitelisted unit is the same as its public template. So all the spike teams run off the public spike team template. All the Mike Force whitelisted units run off the public Mike Force unit template. So what is the difference between a public unit and a private unit? Uh, effectively, one is a group of organized players who play together regularly under an in-house uh, standard operating policy or procedure. And the other one is a group of random people who don't. That is effectively the difference for 99% of the game. Uh, none of the whitelisted units, with the exception of the cast units, have access to extra assets. So my whitelisted spike team doesn't have access to anything else that the public spike teams don't have access to. Right? It's just a group of organized players on their own comms okay, channel for the most part. Yeah, right. So I've chosen my unit. I'm going to go to my... Uh, choose my role for the duty officer. In this case, I'm going to choose the explosive specialist role because uh, I'm used to coming across traps and that's going to allow me to defuse them. I'm just going to quickly grab a quick heal. Down the bottom right hand side of my screen, you'll see I've got food and water. And as uh, one of them's in the red, I'm going to go to my uniform and I'm going to grab a bunch of oranges. Oranges are great because they do both food and water. And all I need to do is get them to the white. Okay, so now I'm done. Alright, so moving along. Uh, arsenal. Click on it. Customize your loadouts on the left hand side. Load all your preloads down the bottom. Uh, if you need a tutorial on that, feel free to hit us up in the Discord. Although, to be fair, there's about a thousand tutorials online that cover how to use an arsenal. Uh, but again, if you need it, let us know and I'll make one. Alright, moving on. So you've uh, spawned in, you've chosen your unit, you've got your arsenal, you've chosen your role, and uh, now you're ready to go. Because we chose the explosive specialist role, we can now identify mines and shit. Alright. I'm going to do a quick TP over to what I want to show you. And we're going to just quickly make ourselves a civilian so we don't actually get shot. Because this is a tutorial after all. So, we're a civilian. Alright, so, this structure here is one of a group of random... Ah, let's start with this. Next attack in 10 minutes. So what's just happened is an AO has finished. That's gone. Green. And the next AO has been randomly selected, which in this case is Canfo. So Canfo has gone blue. For the next 10 minutes, this AO is not active. There is no active AO. And that 10 minute timer is to give players plenty of time to get back to play coup, recover any wrecks, organize themselves, have a toilet break, get themselves a drink, whatever you want to do. Um, and then <coughs> there'll be a notification in 10 minutes time saying this AO is now active. And then all the good stuff's going to spawn in there. But in the meantime, it's basically just a chance for people to you know, recover their wrecks, have a bit of a break, have a stretch before the next AO starts. Now, this structure here is one of the HQs I've just spawned in. Now you'll see there's a bunch of red dots on the left hand side of my mine detector. That is a representation of traps or mines. And as I aim at them and press the T key, you'll see that their icons will change. 
some of them will change to uh, those little red dots. That means I've been able to successfully spot the trap and identify it. And once it's identified, I can defuse it. If I'm an explosive specialist, if I have a mine detector, if I have a toolkit. I'll make another video to update how the whole trap thing works, but suffice to say, red is bad, keep it outside the yellow. All right, so moving up. So here's the, here is the front of one of the HQs. All right, every HQ can be identified by the red flags at the front. If you see red flags at the front, it's an enemy HQ. Each AO will have one random enemy HQ. Sometimes it's this one, sometimes it's a different one, but they all follow the format of two red flags. All right, so we're gonna move inside. And what we're going to be looking for, outside of some bad guys to shoot, is we're going to be trying to find Intel documents. Now every HQ has a different layout. The uh, Intel will be in different places. This one I believe is up inside this building. Alright, so... This building, here, this ob object here, is the enemy HQ, uh, enemy intel. So going in the first person mode and looking down the site, you can get the take intel option, scroll wheel, and we've just taken the intel, right? Now normally that intel, if it's from an enemy HQ, would t reveal all of the enemy camps, all of the enemy tunnels, and all the enemy water objectives if the AO has one. Yeah, uh, but this is just an example, so that Intel doesn't show anything. Secondly, to the Intel, inside the uh, mission area here, there will be some form of enemy supply crates, which will be hidden around the place. Some a little bit harder than easier than others, depending. So for an example, these crates here are enemy supplies. So we just place a few breaching charges down or satchels. And then we uh, GTFO. Fire in the hole, fire in the hole. And uh, we burn that shit to the ground. And once we've secured the intel and we've destroyed all the supplies, the enemy HQ has been dealt with. So we have to destroy the supplies to complete it, and we have to get the intel to reveal the next objectives we have to deal with. Uh, yeah. <coughs> hey, hey, hey. Uh, Rabbit's <coughs> going to be joining us in a bit, mate. I just saw you there. I forgot to say hi. Um, alrighty. Raf. This is Mig, Mig, Raf. Uh, Bear with me, I'm just quickly making a quick tutorial video for the guys on the server because I got asked to make one, so bear with the monologue for like two minutes. Right. Yeah, no problem. So, two red flags is always the indicator for enemy HQs. You see what the intel document looks like and the supply crate, so that is that sorted. Alright, once you've grabbed that, it will show us on the map a bunch of camps and tunnel locations and water objectives camps will look like this uh, compositions agriculture all right so each of the camps is different at the moment, I think we've got about seven or eight made up. By the time we finish it, there should be over 12. Um, so each AO will have a random number of camps. They will appear on the map once you've found the intel from the HQ. As you can see, these also have traps. So mine detectors are your friend. Being an explosive specialist or a toolkit will also make people thank you for your time. Right. Static guns, there's Sometimes it's vehicles, sometimes it's not. The objective at the camps is always to destroy the supplies. As you can see here. 
and you destroy these tents. Now, currently you've got to use explosives. So you go up there at scroll wheel on it, you'll get an add action. It'll see if you've got uh, at least four breaching charges or one satchel. And if you do, you have the option to destroy the camp. Go through the animation, takes about 12 seconds. And uh, once the wheel finishes, it'll give you a warning telling you to GTFO. And about 10 seconds later, that thing will explode. And then you do the next to the next tent and the next tent and so on. Now we are working on adding a custom add action, which you'll check to see if you've got a zippo on you, and it will just allow you to burn it for free. But in the meantime, things that go boom are your friend. Alright, so three to four satchels to take out the three to four tents at any one camp, and a few more satchels to take out the uh, rest of the explosives. So that's how the camp thing works. Also, pro tip, don't stand next to the things would explode. <laughs> when you're doing a tutorial video and you get yourself KO'd, because why wouldn't you? <laughs> Welcome to Pro Nations, where anything we can go wrong, <laughs> will. Alright, so, we've dealt with those fun times. All the camps are effectively the same. It is some form of traps around them, some form of defences. There is always these green shelters which need to be destroyed. And there is some form of supplies when you get blown up. And yes, all those red dots are bad things, don't walk into them. Alright. Moving on from the camps, the next objectives you have to deal with are tunnels. Tunnels are pretty basic. All a tunnel is, is a platform. It's literally a bamboo on the ground. Scroll wheel on it. Go through the animation. 10 seconds later, GTFO. If you don't have enough satchels or explosives, it will tell you you don't have enough. Like it just did for me. But if you had enough, that thing will blow up. Alright, so that's your tunnels. And moving on, water objectives, because oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, aren't they just fun. So, do, do, do. Uh, right, so. so, there we go. Alright, so crates look like this. And we'll just quickly give ourselves a loadout with some explosives so you can see what we do with them. So these things are under the water. And we'll just quickly move that into the water so you can see it. Alright, so what we want to do to get these is we want to have a dive suit on. This allows us to swim freely, otherwise armor swimming is not the best. You need to grab the sealed diver vest. It is a one piece vest and backpack. And it also has inventory and you can hold breaching charges but not satchels in it. So fill it up with uh, eight, such, so eight breaching charges and you've got enough to blow up two water supplies. So now we go into the water. We'll swim up to the fun thing. Get the option to destroy it. Scroll wheel it. Finish the animation. And then we get the hell out. And that is the water objective. Which should blow there we go. Alright. So you know what the water objective looks like. You know what the camp looks like. You know what the shelters look like. Pretty basic. Alright. Moving on. So, we hit the HQ. 
has red flags. Right, every HQ will have red flags, so you don't need to know what the HQ looks like specifically, you just need to know you're looking for a village structure what has some form of red flags around it. Alright, the example being this one here. Alright, the finished version of this has the two flags out the front. What I'm showing you now are just some of the old presets and same as this one you put your flags out the front okay so doesn't matter what it is if it's HQ two red flags grab your intel blow up the supplies you're good uh, the intel reveal all the camps it reveals all the tunnels which you've just seen as those little panels and it reveals all the water objectives which is those crates you've just seen in the water all right now second part we have to deal with is the enemy factories so the fact is very that the absolute basic one is this one here. And this one here. Alright. So these things are exact effectively a HQ, uh, except they have tanks and sometimes aircraft at them. So this particular HQ here. You see, you've got the usual fortifications, walls, mines, all the fun stuff around the outside. There's tanks inside. These are can be taken control of by enemy AI and also by the op 4 playerbasecom The objectives inside the factories is to destroy this fuel and to destroy this vehicle supply point and destroying both of these will complete the objective which will leave only the intel left to get the intel you'll find in one of the brick buildings as we go upstairs voila back to first person we look at the uh, document, take intel, congratulations, we grab the intel. And that would normally then reveal on the map for us all of the AA positions, artillery positions for the mortars and, um, and artillery piece guns, and it would reveal the SAM site locations on the map. Alright. Therein is the factory. Moving on. What do the SAM sites look like? So, give a quick reference. And then this tutorial is basically done. Alright, so this is an enemy SAM site. You've got active radar. You've got four SAMs which are connected to the radar. And uh, these things will shoot down every single transport helicopter, CAS helicopter and uh, F4 plane uh, entering anywhere near the AO. So it is imperative that when the AOs first start, you don't fly directly into them. So when we see this uh, Kanto, which is now operating, right, from a normal player's point of view, there's a yellow mark. There can be a SAM site anywhere within that yellow area, which means flying above treetop until you know where it is, not the smartest thing in the world to do. So the advice is AO starts you want to fly Napa the Earth, which is just over the top of the treetops, and you want to deploy your troops outside the yellow zone. And then you want to move in and try to get eyes on the enemy HQs and the enemy factory. The HQ will give you the intel on the AA guns, the SAM sites, the artillery, and the HQ will give you the intel on the camps, the water objectives, and so on. 
Uh, if you have to prioritize between the two, Factor is the first one you want to hit because that gives you all the locations for the enemy who can shoot back at you and then hit the HQ after that. Okay, and uh, therein ends the lesson. So, HQ, two red flags at the front, grab the intel document, destroy all the supplies, HQ is done, the intel will give you camps, tunnels, and water objectives. Make sure you blow that shit up. At the camps, you'll need to destroy all the shelters, and the supplies, the tunnels is just the platform, just blow that one thing up and you're done. And the water objectives is the crates in the water, dive suit, rebreather vest, um, so combined backpack vest, use breaching charges, and then that's the water objectives done. The factory, AA guns, artillery, and SAM sites. There you go, that's the tutorial. Could make it better, too lazy. Enjoy.